are prey, there will be predators. This series is about the predators. The evolution of prey and predator over history is inextricably linked. The design of one dictated by the design of the other. But why should animals that eat animals have evolved in the first place? The answer has to do with greenery. As a food, vegetation is abundant and easy to obtain. But herbivores like these have to eat in bulk to get all the energy they require. And then they need a complex digestive system to process the cellulose they've just bulk loaded. So the zebra is, in a sense, a factory for turning grass into flesh. And flesh is a very different kind of food. It's difficult to obtain, but it's energy rich and easy to digest. Flesh eaters don't need to eat so often or so much. So being a carnivore is a high risk, high reward lifestyle. But if you are strong, fast, or intelligent enough to catch your prey, then you're on to a winning ticket. Today's terrestrial carnivores represent the product of 65 million years of evolution to exploit every conceivable way of securing flesh. Many different animals, from beetles to birds, eat flesh. But one group of mammals has come to dominate the profession, a group known scientifically as the carnivora. The word carnivore usually evokes an image of the big cats, but there are 236 of these true carnivores, many virtually unknown. Most carnivores are highly adapted with a plethora of hunting skills and a battery of weapon systems. They possess highly developed senses, sometimes stereoscopic vision of high resolution, sometimes ultra-sensitive hearing or smell. They've evolved the ability to stalk, chase and kill while minimizing the risk of themselves being hurt. So successful have the carnivores been, they've spread all over the globe in a wonderful diversity of forms. They range from equator to pole, from the oceans to the highest of mountains, from the hottest of deserts to the wettest of rainforests from the most remote wildernesses to the center of modern cities. Some lead solitary lives. Some live in large family groups. Some are highly promiscuous. Some mate for life. Most hunt, but some are themselves hunted. A few are common, but many you may never have seen before. But the success of the carnivores is not really the power of muscle or the sharpness of the blade, but the power of adaptation. Adaptation to different prey, different climate, different circumstances. And a paradoxical but ultimately very important adaptation for carnivores, not to eat meat at all. And that ability to adapt has led to the most striking diversity of all, that of size. The skull of a least weasel is small enough to squeeze through a wedding ring. The Kodiak bear, by contrast, is the size of a small car. The bear is 10,000 times the weight of the weasel, but both are in the same group, both carnivores. Yet the carnivore also has a velvet claw. It symbolizes the powerful killer and at the same time demonstrates the caring parent. Savagery and gentleness in one.
the need to kill, balanced by the needs of family life. These two opposites, restraint and ferocity, are what make modern carnivores so fascinating. We fear them, yet at the same time, we admire their beauty and grace. But the extraordinary success of these graceful killers might never have come about had it not been for one early but critical piece of anatomy, a tiny difference in their molar teeth. The story begins at a time before the modern continents had split from much larger land masses, one in the north, one in the south, 65 million years ago. At that new dawn of time, the sun was to rise over a world left open by the unexplained mass extinction of the dinosaurs. But among their bones, new candidates jostled for the vacant throne of top predator. Among those contenders, there were, for example, the marsupials. Animals like the modern opossum, which keep their young in an external pouch. They were mostly creatures of the south, separated from the north by an expanse of ocean. And the southern landmass was itself in the final throes of fragmentation into South America, Antarctica, and Australia. There, carnivorous marsupials survived to the present day. Cat-like marsupials, like the voracious quoll, flourished in the isolation of their island continent. But then, as now, they shared the predator's marketplace with other marsupial groups. The planigale looks like a mouse, but is nonetheless a hunter. Another marsupial, today's kangaroo, may have a reputation as an innocuous grass grazer, but at times can be very aggressive. It's easy to imagine its extinct relative, a predatory kangaroo that used its bounding speed to become a killer of the outback. The marsupial predators of Antarctica have no modern descendants. As their continent froze, so they died. But it was South America that was to produce the greatest diversity of marsupial predators. Some survived to the present day. The yapok, with its watertight pouch, uses tactile feet to find its prey. Its long, thin body form was pioneered by one of its predecessors, Cladocyctis, which could pursue its small prey from land into water. Other marsupial killers became larger. The boar hyena was capable of defending its kill against all comers. Those who find it difficult to imagine some of those ancient marsupials as the voracious hunters they undoubtedly were, have only to look at the modern Tasmanian devil. In aggression and ferocity, it takes some beating. Yes. 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 